the Colgate Comedy Hour. Starring Bob Hope in the American Guild of Variety Artists show. Presented by the Colgate Pommel of Pete Company, makers of Halo Shampoo. Colgate Dental Cream. Ajax Cleanser. And palm olive soap. Yeah? Five minutes. Wonder why they didn't give me a dressing room. <laughs> Tony Arden. Tony Arden. Yes, Pop. Five minutes. I'll be ready, Dad. Bob Hope. B Bob Hope. Yes, Dad. <laughs> They make it. I'm going to the Palladium. I'll be right back. <laughs> Skylarks, Skylarks, make it snappy. You're on. Overture. RPM time. Yes, Bonneville is back and we're all gonna make a I do an imitation of a seal. Ooh, ooh, and you think that the seal was real. Three to a ballroom turn that would make a staring Rogers burn. I am the Sidious type. Could you use something? I do something. And I'll sing sentimental songs. <laughs> Major Tuscaloosa. Now that we've listed all our stunts, would you mind if we showed them all at once?
right. You're such a dumb cop. I'm dumb. You are dumb. I would like to make you a bet that I could ask and answer my question where you can't ask and answer your question. Wait a minute. You can ask and answer your question and I can't ask and answer mine? That's right. Prove me that. Let me see. You know what is a rabbit? What? A rabbit. Oh, you know what well, everybody knows what is a rabbit. Well, how does a rabbit dig a hole without leaving any dirt on the outside? Well, that's your question. You answer that. That's right. That is my question and I must answer it. He starts from the bottom and digs up. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. How does the rabbit get to the bottom to dig up? <laughs> that's your question. You answer it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and for the, the few million of you who don't know me, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm, I'm Georgie Price. <laughs> and as president of the American Guild of Variety Artists, the largest branch of theatrical performers, I want to greet you, and I certainly hope that you're going to enjoy our show. All you've got to do is to just Give us a little encouragement and we'll kill ourselves. Because you see, that is the tradition of vaudeville. And of course, everybody knows that vaudeville was the cradle of the theater and the incubator of many of our present stars. Yes, it was the hope of show business then and it will be the hope of show business tomorrow. But right now, I'd like you to meet the hope of all time show business, Bob Hope. Very sweet. Let's give Georgie Price a big hand for coming out here. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Back 
in your incubator. Thank you very much. <laughs> Flew all the way out here from the east by carrier pigeon. And I want to tell you, he's cute, isn't he? Think he's small now. You should have seen him when he was born. <laughs> when he was born, he owed seven ounces. <laughs> mother used to feed him with an eyedropper because he found out it was making his eyes bloodshot. <laughs> but he's a wonderful guy. Georgie and I used to be kids back in the old neighborhood. You know, I'll never forget the old neighborhood. There was Georgie and Joe and Stinky and Herb and Max and Pete, Henry and Moe and Bert and Sam and Douglas Fairbanks Jr. <laughs> What fun we used to have. Just simple pleasures. We didn't have radio and television or movies. We didn't know anything about girls, but we were happy. <laughs> Stupid, but happy. <laughs> and daddy, dear old daddy, he was so kind to us kids, he used to treat us like one of the family. <laughs> daddy was very artistic in those days. He was a painter. Well, he wasn't exactly a painter, he was a spray gun operator in a stolen car garage. Hmm, <laughs> I can still smell those hot Cadillacs. <laughs> then I met my first girl. I'll never forget her. She had curls like Mary Pickford and a face like Buddy Rogers. <laughs> but one day it happened. She ran away and joined some of the Navy. <laughs> Don't get excited. That's, that's when I decided to go into vaudeville. Good old two a day. That's all I could afford, two meals a day. I used to do a dog act. This dog was the cleverest dog you've ever seen. It could make me do anything he wanted. It was a, it was a wonderful act until the dog started drinking. There was nothing worse than a dog that drinks. He used to get so nasty, he dark, barked dirty in front of dogs. And you wonder why the dog was the star, huh? <laughs> No, he'd bark dirty in front of Nick's company, ladies and gentlemen. And I could always tell when he'd been drinking, he'd have that hangdog look. <laughs> he was a French poodle, but he told everybody he was a St. Bernard, so they'd give him brandy. <laughs> After several drinks, he'd stand up on his hind legs and yell, well, here's where we separate the dogs from the puppies. <laughs> He doesn't have to worry anymore. He's very wealthy now. They discovered oil under his doghouse. <laughs> but I'm thrilled to be on this show because I love vaudeville. I was a smash hit in vaudeville. Played all the big time. Cashew, Nebraska, Almonds, Idaho, and Nuts, Arizona. <laughs> then I played the Palace in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I'll never forget opening night. Ziegfeld was out front, sticking up the cashier. <laughs> wanted his money back. I was nervous that opening night, but I was determined to make good in Jackson Hole because I knew that if I made good in Jackson Hole, I could play North Jackson Hole and South Jackson Hole, <laughs> East Jackson Hole and West Jackson Hole. Four solid days' work. <laughs> and I'll never, I'll, I'll always remember that moment when I walked out on the stage in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Have you ever been given the bird by a moose? <laughs> I think he's here today. <laughs> After I had my tuxedo cleaned, we moved on. <laughs> but you know, no matter how tough the old days in vaudeville were, it's not as tough in, as it is in television. You know, in vaudeville, four shows a day and you were through. In television, it only takes one. <laughs> but I know that I voice the sentiments of all the actors when I say that it's a wonderful profession, and if I had my life to live over again and I had my choice of being an actor or a butcher, I'd be a butcher. <laughs> I wouldn't be happy, but I'd be wealthy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is now a pleasure to introduce a young lady whose records have got the nation spinning and is now packing them in here in Hollywood at the famous Macombo and here she is, the sensational Miss Tony Arden. You gotta show me just how much you care. You gotta show me your love's really there. You can't seem to see that longing look in my eyes. 
how much you really care you gotta show me your love's really there you can't seem to see that longing look in my eyes i just know if looks could thrill i thrill you to the sky please let me know me then you'll understand just how to show me that you care so please stop teasing baby prove that you care too So tawny vacuum cleaner company, punks a tawny pencil. Sylvania. How did you ever come to buy a pile of junk like this? Well, he was such a persistent salesman. You know how those vacuum cleaner salesmen are. Once they put their foot in the door, you either have to kill them or buy a vacuum cleaner to get rid of them. Yeah, so well, I bought the vacuum cleaner. If one of them shows up around here, I will not buy the vacuum cleaner. I'll kill him. Why don't you stop peeking over my shoulder? We're going to play cards, go get dressed, change that thing. You look like you've been mopping the house with yourself. <laughs> Move on. By the time you change, I'll have this finished. I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> what? <laughs> How do you do? My name is Fink. I represent the Punxsutawney Vacuum Cleaner Company. Punxsutawney Pencil Stop! Vacuum. Stop! That's enough. Come right in. Oh, thank you. How do you do? My name is Fink. I represent the Punxsutawney Vacuum Cleaner Company. Punxsutawney Pennsylvania. We make the finest vacuum cleaners this side of the United States. Right over here. Thank you very much. Now, you were saying... How do you do? My name is Fink. I represent... <laughs> I rip. <laughs> Go right ahead. How do you do? My name is Fink. I represent the Punxsutawney Vacuum Cleaner Company, Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. We make the finest vacuum cleaners this side <laughs> Yes? How do you vacuum? I make the finest... <laughs> My name is Punxsutawney. I... 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 <laughs> Go right ahead. How do you think? My name is Doom. I represent the Punxsutawney Vacuum Company of... <laughs> How do you do? <clears throat> My name is Punxsutawney. I Don't represent... You make yourself comfortable. Put all this stuff down there, you... Oh, thank you very yeah. much. Mind. Now, all you have to do, you take this adjustable thing out here, and, and <laughs> you need it a little more vent. <laughs> it does feel freer. Thank you. <laughs> now, you'll notice that on most vacuum cleaners, when you put this together, you... <laughs> Your hat? <laughs> Be a little hard to get clean. <laughs> How do you do? I represent the Punxsutawney vacuum cleaner. You'll notice when you put the two things together on most vacuum cleaners, you can't, you can't, but on the, this, you, this has, I've got a... <laughs> Does it sweep? Sweet. Oh, sweet. Yeah. It, it, it sweeps 
very much. Just attach that wire, sir. All, all you do, you put it down on the rug like this, and when you turn this thing on, you will see that it will give you the cleanest sweep of any vacuum cleaner at all. There won't be a speck of dirt left on this carpet when I get through it, so help me. All you have to do, and the reason for it is, this, this Punxsutawney vacuum cleaner, if you, if you notice the Punxsutawney vacuum cleaner has a lot of... of come here. Look at that. <laughs> Oh, well, that's what I was trying to explain. It needs adjustment, you see, because the closest phony vacuum cleaner, if you put your hand in there, you would see the finest motor. <laughs> in Punxsutawney, and that's what gives it the most step. <laughs> Suction. All you have to do, believe me, I, I will show you how to use this thing. If you put this up here like this, you will notice that that you come here. Have to walk the vacuum clean. It will clean the rug very much. I, I promise you that. I tell you what you do. All you have to do is a waxer. You put the waxer right on the table like this, and it will clean this table slicker than a whistle. Look at that. That's the finest job you ever saw. Mm -hmm. All you have to do, you scratched it. <laughs> the paint. The paint will do it. All you have to do is shake this. You don't need the... How does it work? You turn it up... <laughs> Asked me to try a little experiment on introducing this next act, something along the line of that mystery show, What's My Name? I'm going to blindfold myself and see if I can guess who and what the next act is. Now, and now for the next act. Are you there? Yes, I'm uh, here. Oh, that voice. <laughs> No, no, it couldn't be, no. Come on, Donna Joe, you've got to guess who I am, what do I do? Well, I'll have to do this by process of elimination. Right. Would, uh, would you uh, try a little singing? Where the blue of the night meets the gold of the day. Well, that settles that. You're not a singer. <laughs> hey, now, wait a minute, Buster. No, no, no let, me, let me just feel your face to see if I can... Uh... <laughs> you sure you want to go on television? People are eating, you know. <laughs> Buster, come on, who am I? Frankenstein? Oh, that's a good one. Come on. Bob Crosby. Just as Bob Crosby. Hey. I, I, I didn't recognize without the Andrews sisters. <laughs> I just want to tell you that uh, I smoke Campbell's soup all the time. Well, thank you. <laughs> Every night before I go to bed, I drink a carton of Chester. <laughs> well, we're compatible anyway. <laughs> Let me ask you one thing, Bob. What are you going to sing tonight? Well, I promised Mother that I'd do the song Silver Bells. Silver Bells? That's mm -hmm. a picture called The Lemon Drop Kid, which we did about a year ago. And it's a beautiful number by Evans and Livingston. I told Mom I'd do it because, you see, Bing recorded it, and the record hasn't been selling. And Mother thought that <laughs> if I did a good job tonight, that maybe the folks watching would go out tomorrow and buy Bing's record. <laughs> you, uh, you thought that if you sang it tonight, maybe tomorrow they'd buy Bing's record. That's the idea. <laughs> well, happy cloud. <laughs> Yeah. 
Christmas time in the city. Hear them ring. Hear them ring. Hear them sing. Dressed in holiday style In the air there's a feeling of Christmas Children laughing, people passing Meeting smile after smile And above all this bustle You'll hear Silver bells Silver bells it's Christmas time in the city. Hear them ring. Hear them ring. Hear them sing. Hear them sing. Soon it will be Christmas Day. Ring a street light, even stop light. Blink a bright red and green. As the shoppers rush home with their dress. Hear the snow crunch, see the kids bunch. This is Santa's big scene. And above all this bustle, you'll hear Silver Bell. The corner Santa Claus. Silver Bell is busy now because it's Christmas time in the city. Hear them ring. It fills the winter air. Hear them sing, you hear it everywhere. Soon it will be Christmas Day. City sidewalks, busy sidewalks, dressed in holiday style. In the air, there's a feeling of Christmas. Children laughing, people passing, meeting smile after smile. Very soon. of the efforts of so many of us vaudeville hams to kill vaudeville, vaudeville is back with us in a big way again. Yes, Judy Garland is killing them at the palace right now. And a great, great guessing game, great guessing game on Broadway right now is who's going to follow Judy into the palace? Well, if, uh, if they do happen to choose me among the others, there's one song that I'm sure I'm going to have to do. It's the song that I introduced there originally in 1926. I hope you don't mind if I start practicing it now. The world is a stage and we all play a part. There's the dreamer and the lover and the clown. The dreamer, the lover, they are always in tears, but then the clown spreads sunshine around. The life with a smile, that's the life that's worthwhile. So come on and clown, ha, <laughs> clown, until that curtain comes down. And even though you're only make-believing, laugh now. <laughs> come on, laugh. Even though something inside is grieving, laugh now. Ah, and don't let your heart grow too mellow. Stand up and just be a real functionello. Hello. You're supposed to brighten up a place, so laugh now. Come on and laugh. Just try to paint. Paint a lot of smiles around your face and laugh clown. Don't frown. Dress in your bestie. Let you wear. Be like Pagliaccio. Laugh. Laugh. This whole world is, is no 
nothing but a masquerade party. And we all have our own mask to wear. The rich man pretends that he's happy. The poor man pretends that he don't care. Ah, but underneath all of these false faces, that comedy doesn't go so very far. Because at night, when we look in the mirror, we see ourselves. Poor fools, just as we are. Oh, but aren't we all of us actors? We're all of us, just a part of the show. We appear on the scene without asking, and then we must leave someday without wanting to go. Now I, I play the part of a lover. And to some, my silly little song may have its charms. But then the one who keeps my heart singing and singing, well, she, she's just a million miles away from my arms. And my mask, my mask is all worn out with teardrops. At night, when it's laid away for the day on the shelf, Yes, I may make the world think that I'm happy, <laughs> uh, but I can't hide the truth from myself. No matter how much it may hurt, I must go right on <laughs> acting, 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 just like my Piazio. December 2nd, in addition to supplying entertainment, television has contributed much to the advancement of science. For example, the medical profession has used the medium to instruct young surgeons by television operations. The next logical step would be for these operations to go commercial and to become regularly sponsored on television shows. If that happens, here's what you might tune in on, on television shows. And a good, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we greet you from the green room of the General Hospital. Tonight, as we have done for the past 15 weeks, we are going to perform a major operation right in your own home. Yes, welcome to the program, Inside USA. And now, let's meet the star of our show, that medical marvel direct from two smash weeks at Bellevue, the one and only Dr. Robert Pope. <laughs> much. In just a moment or so, we're going to start our operation, and I hope tonight's surgery will be just as much fun for you as I know it'll be for me. You've all met our announcer, Mr. Frank Phelan. How are you, Frank? Just fine, doctor, and how are you this evening? Me? I'm fine. Yes, yeah. I'm just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Would you mind giving us a rundown on tonight's surgery? Well, tonight I'm performing a very unusual operation. I'm taking out a man's appendix. Now, why is that unusual? He only has measles. <laughs> well, doctor... Don't you think it's about time we get started? Yes, I think so. I've done a lot of operations in my time. You oh, know? yes, over yes. 5,000. Yes, and if it keeps up, I'll have to get a license. Yes, I think we ought to. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and for the folks who are just tuning in, I would like to introduce my assistants now. They're Miss Hilton, Miss Brown, Miss Undermeyer, and Miss and Sapphire, right here. These are my assistants who help me in all my operations. Good evening, ladies. Good evening, Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> I told you I was a big operator. <laughs> got started. Yes, I think so. Prepare the patient for surgery, please. That's yes, up. Now, doctor, do you mind telling the folks exactly what you do before each and every operation? Well, I do what every doctor does. I smoke a carton of Maharaja cigarette. <laughs> the cooler, happier, milder cigarette. Shall we try a simple experiment? Yes. An ordinary cigarette. All right. Light it, I hope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Inhale deeply. <laughs> Very bitter and irritating to the throat. Aha! And now a Maharaja cigarette. A Maharaja! <laughs> Coming in Lockheed, runway five. Here we come, everybody. Oh, my appendix. Oh. Oh. Sounds like a sore loser. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, girl. Oh. Go to my office and rest. Oh. <laughs> He's got his long underwear on. <laughs> okay, everything will be fine. Don't you worry about a thing. Everything is... Well, hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. Say, you're new around here, aren't you? Well, yes, I was just transferred from psychiatry. What can I do for you? Look my personality. <laughs> you're beautiful. What hair, what lips. <laughs> Please, you're melting my thoughts. <laughs> What hair, what lips, what shoulders? What oh. about my appendix? Come on. <laughs> down, Lassie, down. I'm a nurse of your doctor. What is the meaning of this? Socialized medicine. 
Tell me that you'll never leave me. Tell me that nothing will ever come between us. What about my appendix? Yeah, what about that dirty old thing? Stay down there, will you? Now relax, my good man, and we'll operate. Tell me, have you ever been operated on before? Yes, my tonsils, my adenoids, my liver, and my kidney. Oh, four operations, you haven't been cured? No, but you ought to see my scrapbook. <laughs> Not just funny you and the doctor, huh? <laughs> yes, death is going. All right, I think you'll be fine. It's a happy loser now, all right. Here we go. How am I doing, Doc? I think you got here a little late, son. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Pick and Pat's coming in fine. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, there must be some action here somewhere. Oh, you're a dancer, aren't you? Yes, you are. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just connect the stethoscope to the loudspeaker and so you can hear your heartbeat. There you are. Suffering from a very bad case of ventricalis and larger mitis, or he's either that or he swallowed Liggett and Myers. <laughs> what are you going to do, Doctor? Operate? No, we'll turn him over and play the other side. Come on, all right. Prepare for surgery. Prepare for surgery. All right, there you are. Towel nurse. for one measly towel. Take it away. Gloves, doctor? No, thanks. Too warm for gloves. <laughs> Come on, doctor. In a minute, I may not need you. Let's start cutting, huh? Yeah, we'll do everything fine. We'll, we'll... Down, you're sick. Down, down. Uh, it sends me. <laughs> that Blue Cross plan gives you everything. <laughs> Now, if you'll just relax, we'll get to that naughty little appendix faster than you can say utter McKinley. Now. <laughs> now, tell me, are you ready, nurse? Yes, doctor. You're ready? Thank yes. you. Thank you very much. Please, remember that first I'm a nurse and second I'm a woman. Well, let's get out of first and shift into second, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Scalpel. Scalpel. <laughs> Scalpel. Well, it looks like a dull evening. Yes, it does. <laughs> Don't blame me. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. Well, I think that for two dollars more, I could have got a veterinary. <laughs> Come out into my hearse. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now we'll just cut right in here. I, oh, before I cut in, I just want to say that I've had many requests from my televiewers asking my surgical technique, so I've written a book answering all their questions. And if you'll just send your name and address and a dollar in, I'll send you my book entitled, How to Perform Major Operations at Home on the Kitchen Table, or There'll Be One Less for Dinner Tonight, Mabel. <laughs> all right, scalpel. Oh, you have your own. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> my spalling, isn't that fun? Hey, Doc. Yeah. Couldn't we use a little ether? Ether? Yeah. Well, we weren't going to rough it, but if you're, uh, if you're chicken, we'll have to give you a dash of ether. <laughs> Just put this cone on your nose. There you are. Yeah, but Doc, I don't want that cone. I want one like you got on your nose. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. I may have to use something rusty on this boy. <laughs> there you are. All right, nurse. Yes. Scalpel. Scalpel. Yeah. Is that it, too? Yeah. Oh, I, I should have gone another year. All right. <laughs> yeah, sponge. Sponge. Forceps. Forceps. Yes. Quiet. Hydrovascular cardiograph. Electro turbo injector impulse. Quiet. <laughs> Coward. Suture. Sponge. Sponge. Needle. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. Needle. I'm sorry, Doctor, but we don't have a needle. No needle? No. Sinatra. No. <laughs> there. I will not, I will not make the incision. Whoops, I'm sorry. Took a divot. I'm sorry. <laughs> Isn't that a pretty center cut? Isn't that nice? Nice, I will now lay back the subcutaneous layer. There you are. Open a little wider, please. <laughs> Now cut the diaphragmatic tendon leading to the pancreas, which, um, oh, just a second. 
Oh, there's something odd about this. This is very, I may have to call in another doctor. Just a second, don't go away. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, this is serious, nurse. Well, what is it, doctor? My goodness, this man has a double endocardium aid. Well, that's too hard. Three clubs, four spades. <laughs> Serious, there's an obstruction here. Well, what is it, Doctor? Oh, it looks like money. money. It's nothing but money. Look at this. Hundred dollar bills. Well, Look at doctor, this. How could he be so full of money? Well, it's an old Crosby custom. They know they can't take it with them, but they always try. <laughs> Gentlemen, you've all heard the song that goes, there's no business like show business. Well, it's got a phrase in it that says, there's no people like show people. Well, that's pretty near right. You know, actors are a strange and wonderful race. Throughout the second great world conflict, they fought to get up to the front lines. Hundreds of them. Not only the biggest of stars, but the kids who hadn't made the main event yet. Jolson, for instance, gave his life in the foxhole in Korea. Danny Kaye is now on his way back from the Far East where he gave the G.I.s a lot of delight. And Jack Benny visited about every front in the last war and also made Korea and Japan. And of course, a lot of other stars. Just recently, they, I, I think it was Monica Lewis that just came back. And I, I don't have time to mention all the people, but wherever there's a need, whether it's on Heartbreak Ridge or at a children's hospital, show people have never been found wanting. Now, AGVA, the American Guild of Variety Artists, has designed this television program in connection with Colgate Palmolive Pete to give show people a chance to perform for their own welfare. You've just seen the first of a series of programs to be telecast for the Agva Welfare Fund. Those of us show people who have been privileged to appear on this program are happy to have had the opportunity to pioneer this Agva benefit practice so that those who have given so much and so bravely might at long last receive. I'm proud to be part of this organization an organization that can boast of such great Americans as Nora Bays, Gus Edwards, Walter Houston, and the immortal George M. Cohan. Got to Broadway, remember me to Herald Square. Tell all the boys on 42nd Street that I will soon be there. Tell them how I am yawning to mingle with the old time crowd. Give my regards to old Broadway and tell them I'll be there ere long. A double R I, a G A N U C. It's the 
It's a name that a shame never has been connected with. Harrigan. Yes, Harrigan. Yes, Harrigan. a vaudeville for you. I want to tell you there's a wonderful book called Showbiz that you should read. It really gives you the entire history of who's there. Oh, I just threw a street in me. <laughs> <laughs> amazing what they can do on television. No, really. It's a wonderful book, Showbiz, and you should read it. Ladies and gentlemen, next week we're going to have Georgie Price's father, Mr. Eddie Cantor, back for Colgate. <laughs> We hope you really enjoyed it. And by the way, these Skylarks did a wonderful job. They're from Lou Holtz's show down at the Belmont Theater. And we've all enjoyed it. We've just loved being here with you. And I am really, really thrilled to have had the chance to come out here and, and do something that connected with vaudeville. I mean it. Just anything that I could do to help revive vaudeville. After all, I did all I could to kill it. <laughs> In the early days. And uh, now I'm back again and doing what I can just to give a little oxygen to the, and I can put you know, and I don't have to tell you the stars and the great stars that have come out of vaudeville. I think all the real great stars, and I'm very indebted and very happy to be back with one of my old friends, Al Goodman, who led the band today. How about that, huh? I'll never forget our first program was for Broma Seltzer. That's true. The sponsor wound up taking all the product, but we really enjoyed it. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, thanks and good night. The Colgate Comedy Hour has been presented by Halo Shampoo. Colgate Dental Cream. Ajax Frenzy. And palm olive soap. Colgate Palmolive Pete Company invites you to listen to Mr. and Mrs. North on radio every Tuesday night and Strike It Rich on TV every Wednesday night. Be sure and tune in again next week at the same time when the Colgate Comedy Hour will present Eddie Tanner with a special show featuring his showstoppers direct from the Marine Corps base in El Toro, California. Two weeks from tonight, another great Colgate Comedy Hour starring Alan Young with Carmen Miranda, Roy Rogers, and Dale Evans, and of course, Trigger. Three weeks from tonight, your star will be Eddie Cantor. And four weeks from tonight, Martin and Lewis will be your stars. Now, good night for the Colgate Comedy Hour, which has been presented by the Colgate Pummel of Pete Company, makers of quality products since 1806.
NBC Television. Mm-hmm.